Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision Blizzard, really did try to play every card in his hand. But, at the end of the day, his position, I think, has ended up just being untenable. And now we have got, essentially, news that Bobby is almost certainly not going to be the CEO of Activision Blizzard for a, well, much longer at all. Indeed. And Indeed. it's very interesting. Some blame is being mm. thrown around. And, uh, well, you said some things. I think we should get into them for this. The last hurrah of yeah. Bobby Kotick. Yeah, and <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> he is going out of the way he sort of always maintained. No, like, last second change of heart. No Darth Vader moment. He's going down the way he trundled along the whole time. Good on you, Bobby. Never change. <laughs> Never change. I mean, could you imagine if you showed clemency at the very, very last second mm -hmm. and then Rory's final video thumbnail, you know, <laughs> where it would be unfair to put, you know, fire and demon horns and stuff on him. That'd be terrible. <laughs> ah, dear. Right. Bobby Kotick. Goodbye. So Bobby Kotick, Activision's longtime CEO, this is of course via the Wall Street Journal, is expected to leave after the deal closes, according to people familiar with those plans. Microsoft had said in its announcement on Tuesday that Mr. Kotick will continue to serve as CEO and that after the deal closes, the Activision Blizzard business will report to Phil Spencer. But the companies have agreed that he will depart once the deal closes. Then, in a interview on Tuesday, Mr. Kotick didn't specifically address his status after the, uh, the, the deal closes, but he did say that um, he has told Microsoft he will always be available to ensure we are going to have the very best integration. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how CEOs generally work, but if I'm available if you need me, I don't think that's quite what a CEO should be like. <laughs> yeah, I think like that's the sort of thing you say to Disney if you're George Lucas, and then you yeah. sort of promptly get, oh, okay, George. Okay, <laughs> where you go. Go make Red Wings too. <laughs> Maybe that's how Disney thought. Um, now from Bloomberg then, Activision CEO Bobby Kotick, 58, will continue to serve in that role only until the deal closes, a person familiar with the deal has said. Uh, so, between June and July is currently what we are thinking. Yep, because that is the, that's Microsoft's fiscal year 23. And that's, yeah. that's the, the deadline. Yeah, so um, there you go. That's basically the deadline, and obviously it's the sort of thing they want this deal to be as done and dusted, as as complete as it can be before that holiday season uh, ramps up, because they, uh, you know, they already cocked up one holiday season with the launch of the Xbox, <laughs> uh, yeah. the new Xboxes. You know, they've had a bit of a better time with Halo, and certainly they will want year three to be completely guns blazing. So, the rage. He raged against the dying of the light. You can't fire me, I am Activision! Is what Bobby would say in a, in a movie adaptation. Mm -hmm. He did not say that. But his interviews are, um, you know what? Fair play. Indeed. <laughs> you double down. In an interview, uh, Kotick said, the deal has nothing to do with the controversy surrounding Activision or calls for him to step down and that Spencer actually reached out to him last year. Okay, so this is us learning a little bit about what actually went on here. Mm-hmm. Now, a person familiar with the discussions, who was not authorized to speak publicly, said that Microsoft looked at Activision's situation, given all the negativity and the pressure on Kotick, and wondered if the CEO would be willing to do a deal. Basically, Microsoft has a lot of money. They have more cash to spend than Sony do. So they can eye up acquisition targets. And in this situation, obviously Activision Blizzard were quite softened. And if we take a look at, you know, so if I zoom to here, you know, you're dealing with $95 a share. They were trading at an all-time high of 104, 105, might have been 106, back before shit completely hit the fan. But obviously, if we think about what, you know, some people maybe believe Blizzard has in their pipeline beyond D4 and Overwatch 2, mm -hmm. all those mobile games, you look at the mobilification of Warcraft and Diablo, basically trying to apply the very, very successful Call of Duty model. I think a lot of people would say that um, you know Activision Blizzard, in a lot of ways, at least in maybe the five, sort of six year term, would only be going up. Yeah. Some people would say that. Now, people who want to play and enjoy games, I don't think they're saying that. Not at all, no. <laughs> but the investor types are going to be looking at like, you know, the increasing MAUs and all of that stuff, repeating that COD Mobile model. We're probably thinking, all right, this company's probably going in a better direction. I think that's one of the things that drove their stock higher. Yeah. So <laughs> Microsoft have came in, and when the company was trading in the like the 60s, off, you know, gave this deal that's up in the 90s, 
even that though, that's below what they were trading at, uh, you know, within the last calendar year, I believe. Um, and I think obviously with a lot of people, I think being short to medium term or medium term bullish on the company at that point in time when they had their all time high. So that basically makes me think that like, yeah, they're softened up and that was a great time to get them at a pretty good price when you think about how Microsoft can actually leverage them. Now, initially, Bobby did not want to sell. No. He still wanted to stay at the company. He probably ended up having pretty good faith in a lot of those unannounced plans, those mobile projects for, you know, for Warcraft and all of that. Um, but according, so yes, Connick didn't want to sell, according to somebody familiar with the talks, and he also put the word out to see if any other company would outbid Microsoft. But at that point, Kodak had little leverage with his board amid the ongoing public scrutiny. That's interesting. Yeah, so I actually think this means that well, everybody raking them over the coals has actually done something. Yep. Or lost faith in the CEO. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of that where, you know, as an example, would a Blizzard, would an Activision Blizzard without Bobby Kotick be financially positioned to be better in the future than with Bobby Kotick, given that, you know, he's not developing any of that stuff. Th those, pro those products and projects will release without him. Yeah. So I guess, like, his sway has all just disappeared, and he's just raging, like, ah, can, would someone outbid? Because outbidding Microsoft means, you know, going for what they were worth. Yeah. As opposed to going for below what they're worth. So you can see how this situation of, like, no, nah, Bobby, this is... Sorry. We, we we have to fix this problem now, and it turns out that we, we support you, but also you're part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, so um, again from the Wall Street Journal, Microsoft approached Activision about a deal in November <laughs> after the journal's article. That, yeah, that, that that's what I thought was um, most interesting, where he says, oh, oh, they reached out to us last year. You're like, well, I'm assuming last year, November's last year. But, yeah. you know, you, you imply, oh, before all this went on, I've been talking to them for years now. We're always considering a deal. And now we hear this, and it's like, yeah. Yeah, Microsoft went, oh, what's that? You're in trouble? Yeah. Because the money? Because <laughs> the journal's article was the one that was personal yep. to Mr. Kotick. It was not general company-wide problems. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole, uh, I will have you killed, that mm -hmm. thing. Nothing like a little power bender. <laughs> uh, so he was between a rock and a hard place. Now, from Gamesby then... And so when Phil called, it happened to be at a time where we were getting ready to start our long range planning process and realizing that these were not, or sorry, that these were going to be issues and challenges. We had the discussion. Phil and I know each other well and we think, or sorry, and we have a great relationship and the company has a great relationship. And when you start to think about all the skills we need, all the resources we need and what they have, it made a lot of sense. All right. Bobby himself. All right, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Even though we know that initially reports say, anyway, you didn't want to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when they originally called, we said we would think about it. Then they made an offer uh, that was incredibly, uh, incredibly attractive at 45% premium over the stock price. And this is just the thing. What Bobby saw, said there is true, but with the obvious historical context of, yeah, it's a 45 premium over basically a, no, I'm not, I don't think it's a five-year low, but, you know, a, a recent yeah. history low. It's like, yeah, you're, you're, that's true, but only when you look at a select bar, a part of the graph, especially, I mean, some people are going to, they're going to look at that depressed stock and they're going to think, how much of this is uh, the fundamentals of the company? Are there, you know, are concerns about production pipeline overblown to the point of it being FUD because of the popular thing to do to hate on them? I think some of the investor types would maybe think, okay, the public thing is, you know, overblown. Uh, you, you can maybe see that's blowing over the stock going back up. I know it's going to feel really shitty to hear for loads of people, but that kind of does tend to be how it is. So, yeah, just... <laughs> sure thing, Bobby. You're good at... Cor well, no, you're not good at them. You do corporate communications, and this is one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, so the, the way I see him actually saying that, because obviously he said it in an interview to Gamesby to Dean Takashi, I just imagine, you know, the, the crying Wojak with a happy mask over and yes, just crying underneath. It. That's exactly what I imagine. 45% <laughs> premium over the stock price. What a great deal. Fantastic. Ah! <laughs> Um, so basically say, you know, hey, it's all all to plan. Happy, happy. <laughs> um, so to continue, I think what affected the stock price more than the sexual harassment investigation is pushing out Overwatch and Diablo. 
And then I think people started to see that this year's Call of Duty wasn't performing as well. So I certainly think the filing in the Wall Street Journal article contributed to that, but stocks go up and down for a variety of reasons. Look, Bobby is right there in most of what he says. I would take issue with the more bit. Yeah. Um, certainly if I'm looking at this, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking about what it could mean for the stock, well, I'm going to start thinking about the attrition rate of the company. Mm -hmm. And wasn't it that Ubisoft reported Activision Blizzard's attrition rate at 16%? Or at least that 16% number is what happened when we covered that Ubisoft story. Yes. So what I'm thinking is, right, what what's the rub of all of this dramatic news? Oh, it's you have a higher than average turnover rate, which means you're going to have a bunch of brain drain, yep. which means things are going to be delayed. And that also did mean Overwatch and Diablo. Like, it, it's kind of wild that he says this because part of, I think, the reason that they even gave for Overwatch and Diablo being pushed back was, like, team changes. Yes. Yep. Like, losing directors, which is <laughs> stuff that was fucking tied to this. Yeah, he's he's literally playing weird, like, kind of uh, point in the chain, cause and effect games. Like, no, it's Overwatch and Diablo caused the problems. Hey, she, you know, she, like, if, if Dean had said, well, what caused those to delay? He'd be like, fuck, you got me. He's trying to do a Neo and dodge all the bullets, but, yeah. you know, they're... They're just kind of hitting him. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hitting him anyway. He's just not really dodging them. <laughs> that would have been a different so, movie. Yeah. There yeah. you go. It's over. Well, I mean, he he, he could yeah. probably just buy a cheat pack for the Matrix, which we're, mm -hmm. maybe he wanted to do. So, yeah, he says it was all that and maybe not all the negative PR. But that brings us to, look, <laughs> you know, some, some people, one of the things that we would recommend the companies do, uh, at least for their own self-interest, is to try to own the story. Which yeah. generally we would say means journalists are fucking predictable. We are very predictable. We're, we're predictable. Of course, yeah. I mean, look, you do a drama, me and Matt are going to sit here and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Company person. Yep. Whatever. You know, you do a drama, we'll talk about it. So us press types and the journalists and the pundits, we are so fucking predictable. You know, you could you could input stuff into an algorithm and you could probably work out the freaking titles of the videos. Of course, yeah. And the titles and the headlines of the articles. So that's how you, uh, you know, control your own narrative for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could, yeah, you could, oh, I guess, well, the point is there is you own the story as in you take control of the story. You don't own the story literally. Yes, <laughs> So, Mr. Kotick uh, has been eager to change the public narrative about the company, and in recent weeks has suggested that they make some kind of acquisition, including gaming trade publications like Kotaku and PC Gamer. Could you imagine the levels of seeth oh if God. you are like a Kotaku writer, and suddenly your fucking boss is Bobby Kotick? Oh. I mean, that, would that not be the final nail in the coffin of Kotaku, a, a publication that has had such a revolving door of staff, had a new editor-in-chief, kind of revamped how it does things, now kind of, um, you know, fair play. Kotaku has certainly earned themselves clicks. They, definitely they have, have certainly done tweets yeah. worded for engagement yeah. to success. I'm just thinking, honestly, I'm just thinking about Steven Messner at PC Gamer. No longer. Oh, is he, oh, that's right. I think, I think he quit, and uh, I think he actually is going into game development, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It also does mean that the resident, uh, or at least one of the resident World of Warcraft people, um, is is no longer there. But yes, yeah. he just wanted to buy PC Gamer or Kotaku. Oh, you're right, yeah. Um, because, you know, if you buy PC Gamer, pff, that's the Wall Street <laughs> Journal told. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, <laughs> yes, because a games publisher literally in bed with a news outlet is 100% above board. Hello, IGN Humble. Yep. <laughs> um, so the fun thing is that this actually fair play to... You know what, Kotaku? You, you onioned, you hard-drived yourselves. Uh, they, they did this as a joke. Yeah, back in 2010. Yeah, they, they floated this as, as a joke back then. And uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Turned out to uh, be a thing the Bobster thought about. <laughs> That's awful. So, side note, we've yeah. got some Games Beat fun stuff. Yeah, there was stuff that didn't necessarily fit into the overall, like, oh, well, Bobby's leaving stuff that was in the Games Beat, the, in the Games Beat interview. And I thought it was all just interesting and fun, kind of like little things that he was thinking about that in terms of what Activision could do that ultimately never happened and, and some of it being down to, like, what they could technically do with Microsoft. So maybe this is stuff we will see in future. It's hard to know, but... Yeah, maybe it gives us some thoughts into what Bobby's sort of vision would have been for the company. Yeah, it's certainly unusual. 
So he says, I wanted to make a new Guitar Hero for a while, but I don't want to add teams to do manufacturing and supply chain and QA for manufacturing, and the chip shortages are enormous. So that's interesting. He says, he, uh, he says I had a really cool vision for what the next Guitar Hero could be, uh, would be, and realized we don't have the resources to do that. And Skylanders too. One of the great disappointments of my career is that other people came in and they came out with crappy alternatives. Is that hit? Like, because I know there is a Disney Toys to Life mm. and I know there's Rock Band. Yeah. But Rock Band's really good. It's yep. not crappy. So I don't know what he's really talking about there. But absolutely, people would say that Skylanders and Guitar Hero are untapped resources. Yeah. Um, for, for the company. Mm hmm. Um, he says, and they dumped all these crappy alternatives into the market and basically destroyed the market for what was a really cool future opportunity. If you look at Skylanders with its hardware and manufacturing and supply chain, there are, uh, yeah, uh, there's some of the things that basically the, you know, they can't do, but Microsoft can. Hmm. I'd be supportive of those things coming yeah. back. Um, I mean, you know, there's certainly issues with Skylanders, yeah. um, but I, I do like there actually being a, a physical Mm -hmm. uh, item being involved. Um, maybe there's just this little bit of me that's like, kids should play with toys, and you know, maybe, mm. maybe it's too far gone. But uh, at least if we can get them their Overwatch Lego and their <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, he says. I was sharing my frustration about not having enough social capability in Candy Crush. I really want to be able to have a Candy Crush experience where players can play games against each other and they can socialize and they can have voice over IP and video over IP. So I suppose people are just going to be squelching their meat on uh, Candy Crush. That's exactly it. That's that. That'll be it. It'll be yep. the the hip new Snapchat replacement. <laughs> oh dear. Um, oh dear. Interesting. I I do think there is something to what he's saying though. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things that drives a lot of stickiness and stuff in games is the social side. Here's a really good example. Actually, it was Zynga being onto a total fucking trick back in the day. They mm. would get kids playing Farmville. And the kids would try to get better farms than the other kids. They'd yeah. meet in school. They'd talk about their their farms or whatever. And then they would go and, you know, maybe use the, the mobile phone payment. Uh, this is what a lot of people used to do at school. They would use the mobile yeah. uh, or the landline phone payment thing where it, like, bills. Basically, it bills the phone bill. So mm -hmm. that's how people could buy those uh, cosmetics without yeah. really cluing it on. Um, but that was obviously something where the social side was driving loads of sales. And if you look at a Candy Crush like game, um, I mean, actually, Matt, remember Archero? Yes, Archero. Yep. One of those exactly. games that had the veneer of being a video game that you play. Mm. Uh, but then, you know, as, as time goes on, you realize the entire thing is basically an idle game because of yeah. how they do their balance and their power creep. But they do it so that you're always dared to buy gems mm -hmm. it's like one of the best executed evil mobile games i would say mm -hmm. something like candy crush you know it can do that but imagine if they can get the social angle so i think that's yeah. really what bobby's uh, about there yeah he wants to make a community but that's because communities basically create stickiness and deeper user investment yeah, I think it's also interesting that, you know, we think of Activision as this massive, the Activision Blizzard, this massive business with so much money. And they're like, yeah, no, we can't really get physical stuff, components for our games anymore. We just can't do that. We don't have the resources. That's really interesting to me. Uh, I suppose a lot of it, too, is operational. Yeah. And, you know, opportunity cost. It's like they've they focused and really pared down the organization to do one thing fantastically. Then, you know, maybe for doing those other things, it would be to do it right. Yeah, perhaps it would just be really hard. Yeah, um, which is obviously, you know, different to back in the day when they just kind of shat them out. And everyone's like, oh, this is cool. And it was overpriced. It was like, yeah, this is fun, though. But it's just they're like hyper focused on being efficient. And to be fair, it's not like that's worked out very well for them recently, at least. Yeah. Now it's time to talk about Bobby's golden parachute. Indeed. Yes, which is different than what we expect, I think. Yeah, so he's actually not getting two hundred ninety-two million. He's not getting that payout we talked about yeah, there. Yeah, I I don't follow it entirely because it's a little bit beyond me. But apparently, according to the the games industry base, it's because he doesn't own any unvested equities. He's not allowed any of that payout from the the change of control stuff. It doesn't apply whatsoever. So in that case, what he's doing is he's just cashing it all out for three hundred and ninety million dollars. Yep. Um, so yeah, both Microsoft and Activision Blizzard have agreed to the move, which will see him receive that, according to the Wall Street Journal. Majority of the cash will come from the just shy of 40 million shares that he owns, um, but he's not eligible for a change of control payment. Yep. So basically, 
Bobby is uh, getting lots of money. Yeah. Well, and about unions. Yeah. They, 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 all of this great progress that we talked about recently could ultimately be in danger here because the problem's solved, right? Problem solved. Bobby's gone. Everyone's happy now, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, look, look, look at this. Look yeah. how cool Phil Spencer is. Yeah, our hero saved the day, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the villain is dead. The gallant Phil Spencer rode in on a horse resplendent in golden armor and slew the demon. I suppose that's why he bought Doom. <laughs> uh, the story is over. Big happy ending. All love a happy ending, except, you know, what else is going on? Because there are some people thinking that, well, all this ongoing bullshit and Activision Blizzard not really dealing with it, great. This has been a catalyst for industry change. But what happens if Microsoft comes in and it's just like, it's okay. And it's this weird thing of, we're, you know, we're, we're going to improve your conditions. We're going to treat you better. You don't need a union, right? Yeah, no, it, it, it's in, instead of the developers and the, the unions taking the par, the, the other company has the par, which means if you look at it on a divide of corporations versus the employees, all of the par stays on the side that we see has problems owning that par, as opposed to the great change that everyone wanted being, well, shifted over the over the fence, and that's just substantially less likely to happen now that Microsoft are obviously going, that's fine, yeah, we'll look so- after you. You still need to remember, Microsoft's a big corporation, and that means yep. it is staffed with many corporate homunculi <laughs> and demons and all yes. sorts of bizarre otherworldly beings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so that just means the, the things inherent to inherent to humongous mega corporation are going to still apply. Here's from Bloomberg in 2018. Microsoft bug testers unionized. They were dismissed. The subcontracted <laughs> workers were challenging the termination, but they were uh, they couldn't hold out. Basically, Temporary uh, Workers of America won a major victory in 2014, winning the right to negotiate with the temp agency who handled all QA for Microsoft, and all 38 people were fired over the next few years. A new busting complaint with Microsoft dragged on for ages, uh, but basically they needed to settle um, for financial relief, and they got three weeks of fucking paid time off. Yep, that was it. There's, Problem solved! Yep. Done! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this great big union battle resulted in, okay, everyone gets three weeks paid off for this union, also you're all fired. Now, is that not just poggers? Yep. Uh, yeah, so Microsoft maintained it had no involvement in the uh, in the decision and uh, that it all could be explained rather innocently. Yeah. That said, Jason has heard from uh, employees that while they're optimistic, they're also determined to keep organizing. So, look, hmm. Microsoft, I think they obviously know yeah. the employees that they are inheriting here mm-hmm. and uh, that a lot of them are really fired up for very legitimate reasons. So, there we go. Uh, one of the things loads of Blizz employees are like, they, they saw the initial, you know, talk of Bobby staying on. They were like, oh, fuck me, it's still going to be like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, it seems like Bobby's going, at least going through the social media. I saw a fair few Activision Blizzard employees, mostly in Blizzard because, you know, I'm, that's more my sphere. Um, yeah, the, the employees are happy. And ultimately, that's uh, that's good. You know, it's, yes. it's good because it is an inherent good that they're happy. It's also, I suppose, a... Um, a selfish good for the people who play uh, oh, Blizzard games because I have a feeling <laughs> that what the employees uh, would really like to do is get better conditions and go back to work and uh, work in games because they're passionate about games. That's why they have their job. Yeah. They probably just want to do that. Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but it was it was someone. I think it was either Blizzard or X Blizzard, and they tweeted like yesterday. I can I just go into work? I just want to do a normal day of work once, please. And you're yeah. like, that's you know that's that's a fair point. How are they supposed to get any work done yeah. at all? Like, I'm half expecting to hear all like more delays just from this news because they have to like reorganize and rethink. And the employees will be like, "What the fuck is going on? Please, please, can I do my job?" Uh, yeah. Oh, man. So that's basically it for today's story. I mean, as for where we're left, basically, Bobby's gone. Bobby's gone. We, you know, we obviously do need to keep this sort of thing in mind. Yeah, but. While I do have significant long-term concerns about all of this means for the actual valuation of games and yeah. also the health of competition within the market, Definitely. I think medium-term and short-term for employees and for gamers, hmm. this is a good thing. Definitely. So it's it's just that thing, you know, a uh, good thing can be a good thing, but also, you know, it's weird. It's like a... Multifaceted, like... There's a Trojan horse in fucking everything. <laughs> and, you know, we all like Phil. We all like his direction. But Microsoft has shown monopolistic tendencies in the past. Let's put um, it lightly. Putting it light, 
lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, will they be a good citizen? Who the hell knows? Um, the, the mixed records. Yep. Which is exactly what you would expect from any large company, but certainly mm. from everything I hear of, you know, the ID at Xbox program, from what I hear of, uh, you know, how they actually run Game Pass, from from what I've heard from like some of their studios and stuff, um, it, it does seem like things are either quite good or at least are getting better. Yeah. Um, and when I think about the things that matter to customers, like being willing to delay a Halo, it's like these are all the decisions that I wouldn't expect from Activision. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, imagine if. For an example, imagine if Shadowlands was delayed by six months. Instead of an actual, one. like, hey, this is going to straight up suck everyone, but it's delayed for six months. And maybe because of that, we got a patch 9.1, a 9.2, and maybe they actually get to do a full-sized expansion with a 9.3, because whenever one of the Blizzard talking heads said, oh, we always planned for this to be a story in three parts, uh, we're like, well, that's obviously fucking bullshit, because that's we can true. compare this to how you've ran other expansions before, and you clearly have deviated from the norm. Hmm. hmm. But, like... Perhaps in, if that situation came up again and Microsoft was the boss, they would think, okay, so we could have shit World of Warcraft and damage one of the most profitable profitable games that probably freaking exists, uh, or we could um, take some time, do it right, not piss off our players, uh, and actually, in a way, get more efficient development because, say, if Shadowlands had have had three patches and, you know, it's like you built all those zones. Mm. You built that entire, you know, end game experience and everything. You're getting less out of it when you do le- yeah, so yeah. and maybe this applies for the call of duty uh, gamers as well now not having a friggin relentless yearly march of november call of duties would be quite bizarre yeah um or you know october november whatever but certainly it seems like vanguard maybe could have had some more time in the oven uh, from what mm-hmm. i understand of the multiplayer you know even bobby admitting mm-hmm. here that it didn't do as well yep and that- maybe all these things would be better with microsoft yeah, I feel like Microsoft have the money in the room to reevaluate when decisions go wrong, as opposed to Activision, who seem to barrel ahead at any cost, not understanding that if you don't do work right the first time, you have to do it again. Yeah, like I think Activision were so reliant on the money for Call of Duty that they were ending up doing things that were damaging the long term health of that franchise. Microsoft is probably going to take the longer term view and think, well, shit, there's so much value in this franchise. We can't afford to have a shitty release. Yep. In the same way that they clearly did that with Halo. They seemingly understood from Halo 5, oh no, if if you piss off all your players with the storyline and their emotional investment, you might have an issue. Indeed. So, yeah, there we go. Um, right, let us know what you think about all of this. Um, you know, it's it's weird. There's, there's a bit of me with Bobby. It's like... Uh, I only say this as there's the side of, you know, oh, Bobby, that old chestnut. There's mm. a little bit of me that will miss him. Obviously, yeah. I think it's a good thing that there's a change of hands here. Obviously. And it does feel a bit fucking rank that, you know, people can cock it up mm. and uh, they do get the big golden parachute. Um, but there is just that tiny bit of me that's like, man, demon horns and Bobby. Won't we able to do that again? Unless yeah. mm. goes back into gaming. Who knows? I was... So I was thinking of this earlier, I don't think he will. I don't think he will do anything in gaming because he he did have that concern back in the day of, you know, it was hard for him to date because there, you googled him and you found devil horns on his head in the first images. So I think he'll probably go, well, I'm fucking done with that. If you especially if you also remember it's he was Tinder. Uh, honestly, probably. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good move. Yeah, that's that is basically like his approach. I need the news fixed. I'll buy Kotaku. Um, people with money think weird. Anyway, uh, it's interesting to remember that he wasn't actually in Activision for any real strong passion in gaming because he's never been a gamer. He's always been just a tech dude. Yeah. He's always been a he's always been a businessman in the tech sector. I think he, he played games in the arcade and I think didn't he play Skylanders with his kids? Yeah, it's like have kids. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that it? Yeah, I, that, that's one thing I find also interesting about very rich people. You very very often know nothing about their family. Oh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which is pro- probably for the best, all yeah. things considered. But. Oh, yeah, no, like, it would be completely yeah. unfair if people actually knew Bobby's family. I mean, yeah. Imagine the amount of shit they would get. Would yeah, of course. Sort of, be, of course. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, no, the f- I, like, he played a couple of games, but he was never a big gamer. Anytime he's asked about it, it's always, oh, the back in the arcades when I didn't run companies. Or, oh, yeah, Skylanders, those were cool. Nothing like, oh, yeah, I, I seriously put in tons of hours into World of Warcraft, like other executives are like these days. So I imagine when he goes, it'll just be, yeah, I'm going to go and join the like angel investor venture capital uh, like circuit or just retire to a cozy board position, something like that. You know, 
we're really going to have to update a lot of our the life and times of Bobby Kotick. Yeah, I was thinking it's about that. Well. By the way, that's existed here for a year. Yeah, um, it's like it's like documentary length, yeah. and I feel like it's probably going to be a big two part documentary. The only yeah. problem is we don't actually have a channel where it really fits to release it <laughs> no. because it's very different to the content that goes here. Yeah. So I don't know what to do yeah. with that. It's, but mm. man, yeah, and what a part two. Yeah, honestly, this in, like I would say this entire week for the past uh, twenty four hours, basically, I've been thinking about that video and going. Man, it's nice that at least as far as gaming's concerned, we have a bow to tie that off now. Yeah. So we could have we could actually finish it now instead of going and Bobby remained in charge of Activision Blizzard until time ended. <laughs> so Oh uh, dear. Okay. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you want to support us and also get some sweet, sweet merchandise, including the big chunky Griffin pin, uh, you can check that out over on our Patreon. Other than that. Me and Matt will, of course, see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great day and goodbye.